In this episode of Weekly Poker Hand, we have a hand featuring Rampage Poker. They're playing the bomb pot. Let's get right to it. We decided to do a friendly $10 bomb pot. I'm in the hijack. We're going eight ways to the flop. Everyone put $10 in the middle. And I pick up Ace, Queen of Diamonds. That's always a very nice hand. What I wanna know before we move forward, what's your favorite poker variant and No Limit Texas variety? Do you like playing bomb pots or the seven deuce game or the stand up game or something else? Let me know in the comment section below. Ace, Queen of Diamonds, here we go eight ways. Going to a flop, one board of Jack, five, five, two diamonds. There's an early position bet of $45. Action folds to me and on this paired board, I have the nut flush draw. I think raising is a little bit of an overplay as we can be behind some full houses. Also, you just never know what these players can have because it is a bomb pot at that. This is a spot where I definitely think a lot of people will just put in a raise because hey, nut flush draw, two over cards, how bad can it be? But it can actually be very, very bad in multi-way pots. You have to be careful in multi-way pots because someone's likely to have something. And that's even more true when you're playing a bomb pot where everyone plays every combination of the Jack-5 offsuit. We actually discuss this concept thoroughly in the brand new advanced cash game course at PokerCoaching.com. Rampage Poker is actually part of that course. Getting coached by super duper world-class crusher Chris Brewer. And perhaps they talked about this. This is a spot where in the past Rampage would have punted hard. But instead, he does not. He just calls like a nice disciplined boy. So anyways, I decide on a call with a nut flush draw and two overs. Get the big blind to come along as well. And we're off to a turn, which is the King of Diamonds. Bink, get there with the nut flush. Like I said, it is a paired board, so got to be a little cautious. The early position player continues again for $125. And like I said, I just make the call. It's a bomb pot. Someone can easily have a full house. But I will say we also have a royal flush draw, though. This is a spot again where I think a lot of people raise immediately because they could just be against a five or a worse flush and they want to get all the money in immediately. The thing is, though, again, in a bomb pot, what's your opponent really betting the flop and the turn with? When the flush comes and you block the flush. I mean, maybe they'll keep betting with a five, but this is a spot where I would not be the least bit shocked if your opponents are anywhere near competent to be shown a full house a lot. And if your opponent is in here with something like 7-5 and they're just drastically overplaying it, that's fine. Because if you do put in a raise, I think most people are smart enough in bomb pots to realize this is not a good spot. And they'll fold. Now, will they fold? I don't know. Maybe they won't. If your opponent's going to put their money with any five, you might as well raise immediately. But I'm giving people a little bit more credit in 2023. But, uh, you know, I do hear the games are quite good. But what's cool is that the big blind comes along for 125. And we're still going three ways to the river. That is nice. Whenever it goes three ways to the river, you know you're against a lot of flushes, a lot of flush draws, a lot of fives, and you just have to get a nice clean out. Which comes the 10 of diamonds. Hmm. No freaking way it happened. We have the royal flush, first time ever in my life, and action checks to me. What the hell do I do here? What would you do here? What are we trying to get called by? Notice your opponent cannot have the ace, king, queen, or jack, or 10 high flush. So that means if they have a flush, it's probably pretty bad. They could have a five, but if it's a five, it's not a full house, that's also pretty bad. So I think against those hands, which I do think is going to be a lot of your opponent's ranges, you probably want to go smallish, like 150 bucks. I realize typically whenever you are betting in position on the river, you often want to be using bigger sizes because if you have a marginal hand, you should just check it back and not reopen the action. But in this spot, I think, especially exploitatively, knowing your opponents just can't have anything that good, you probably want to go for a smallish bet because if you do bet small, like 120 bucks or 150 bucks or 200, maybe 200 is starting to get a bit big, but something like 150, if your opponents do have a five or a flush, they're just going to call and you're going to get a little bit of value. And on top of that, if they do have a full house, like say they happen to have pocket jacks or 10-5 suited, 10-5 off suit even, right? We're playing a bomb pot. I think they may feel at least somewhat inclined to put in a raise. And they may not necessarily raise if you bet big on the river. So in this spot, the pot's 590 bucks. I believe they have something like 1,200 behind or so, 1,000 behind. I get that you could just shove and shoving's probably okay because if they do have a full house, they will probably be unable to fold it. But I think an, a much better strategy to really try to target a lot of your opponent's marginal hands, like fives and flushes, is to go for the small-ish bet size. 
Never been in this spot before in my life with the Mega Nuts with the best hand, the Royal Flush. I'm showing this hand regardless because I have to table it because that's what's going on in my mind right now. And I decided to go for a small sizing. I, I don't know, all right? Are there worse flushes out there? It's only a nine high flush, and I guess we could have cooled a full house, but I'd expect full houses to bet on the river as well. Anyways, I sized to $120. I love this play. Great job by Rampage. Maybe he is listening to what? He's learning over at PokerCoaching.com. Get the big blind player to fold and onto this early position player. What I want to know is, what did the big blind just fold here? Mm. They called a flop bet, and then they called a turn bet on Jack, 5-5, five, five, King. What could they have possibly had to call the flop, call the turn, then then snap fold the river? Like, what could they even be in here with? That's what I want to know in the comment section. What in the world can this player even have? Are they going to just snap fold, like, a five on the river? I mean, maybe they will. That's some discipline. Are they calling with Jack with a nine of diamonds on the turn? That doesn't seem very good. And then just snap folding a nine flush on the river? I don't know about that. That's a weird play. This is why live poker is alive and well. I know some people on the internet think that you can't win at live poker in 2023. Everyone's really good. Mm -mm. And no freaking way. Puts in a check raise of $400. This player has like four to five hundred dollars behind what a dream spot so what should the opponent be check raising the river with to some of their stack but not all of their stack i don't even know i think in this spot if the opponent is going to check raise they probably just want to check shove all in because notice the pot was already six uh, seven hundred bucks or so after rampage's bet so given they only had nine hundred or a thousand i think they just want to check shove with Full houses, right? I mean, that's it. Pocket kings, pocket jacks, pocket fives, of course. Is pocket tens good enough too? Probably. So yeah, just the good full houses. Should they check raise to this size with a weak full house to try to get called by the ace high flush or other weak full houses? The problem is, is like if you have king five even, what's going to call you? I mean, you're always getting called by better hands. And that's really the problem. In these bomb pots, all combinations of better hands that could exist do exist. So you gotta be careful in these situations when eight people see the flop. Anyway, 400 bucks, obviously we're going all in. When you are in Rampage of Shoes, by the way, in the spot, don't just like snap all in. I think a lot of people, they bet 120, the person raises to 400, you realize they're calling a lot. But sometimes some people like, shove it all in, celebrate, almost turn their hand over. Don't do that, act normal, and then put your money in. Going runner runner for a royal flush and getting check raised on the river, this is just what dreams are made of, right? Anyways, got like $400, $500 behind. Uh, there's nothing to do, but I guess take a little bit of time and not act too excited. Then announce all in. All in? All in? All in. Pause right here. Imagine you're in the opponent's shoes and you have like third or fourth nuts. So you have pocket tens here and you somehow got to the river in this way, which you wouldn't have. But imagine you have uh, pocket jacks or pocket kings. And on the river it goes small bet raise all in even from rampage poker i think this is a spot where you should be drastically overfolding. now again can you fold like pocket jacks here i don't know but you have to realize with pocket jacks you lose to some combinations of hands right pocket kings which exist pocket fives there's only one of those and ace queen of diamonds there's only one of those maybe queen nine of diamonds exists too i'm not looking at the board it must exist yeah queen nine of diamonds exists too so all those would obviously shove you have to ask what else would shove here that you beat? And I think the answer is not a lot unless it's just some insane bluff. So is Rampage going to take a five, like, you know, any, any random five, and then check jam it as a bluff? I'm sorry, bet it's small on the river, which you shouldn't do to begin with, and then jam it as a bluff. And I just don't, I don't think most people are doing this in this scenario. So this is a spot where even getting really good odds, I think given all this action has happened, you're supposed to find some pretty big folds. You're not supposed to fold like pocket fives or kings, and maybe not even jacks, but it's certainly not a great spot with jacks. But with a hand worse than pocket tens here, I think it's a pretty easy fold if you did happen to check raises the size. And I would bet you, most people in most games, they just look at their cards, they say, I got the jack five full house, or whatever it is. And they call it off, and they lose, and then they think it's a bad beat. But it's not. It would just be a bad play. She doesn't look happy about it, but ultimately does end up making the call. Holy I have a royal. Can I like take a picture and do shit? Holy shit. It's the first royal. How do you get a royal? 
Oh my god. What a sick hand. She ends up later telling us she had pocket kings. What an ultimate cooler. The chips were going in no matter what and found the suck out one outer on the river. That is what you call being a luck box. And there we go, scooping a monster pile of chips. Rampage the Lux Box, winning again, drawing to one out, somehow wins the pot. To be fair, though, he actually played this one very, very well. Good job to him. Good luck. Have fun. Whenever you make a royal, I hope you get paid. Click the like and subscribe button before you go. I'll talk to you next time.